You're listening to The Philosopher's Note on the 80-20 Principle. More wisdom in less time. Hi, this is Brian welcoming you to The Philosopher's Notes on the 80-20 Principle. The Secret to Success by Achieving More with Less by Richard Koch. We'll start with a quote from Richard Koch. He says, The 80-20 Principle, like the truth, can make you free. You can work less at the same time you can earn more and enjoy more. The only price is that you need to do some serious 80-20 thinking. I love that. We've all been exposed to the 80-20 principle at some point in our lives. The principle states, quite simply, that 20% of efforts lead to 80% of results. Whether you know it as the Pareto principle or the principle of least effort, it's an incredibly powerful concept. Although many authors discuss the 80-20 principle as a core component of their time management and self-development programs, Richard Koch, a former Bain & Co. and BCG consultant, provides an entertaining and practical application of the theory in his great book. In fact, you could say he's become the living guru on the subject, and if you dig this note, you'll definitely enjoy the book, which is densely packed with big ideas you can apply to your business, relationships, time management tactics, and even discovering and living your purpose. I trust you'll enjoy this quick look at the book and that the ideas will get you thinking about how you can focus your time and energy on the activities that give you the most results. So let's jump in to the first big idea, Pareto and 80-20. It's everywhere. Koch says, 80-20 thinking requires, and with practice enables, us to spot the few really important things that are happening and ignore the mass of unimportant things. It teaches us to see the wood for the trees, end quote. So it was 1897 when Vilfredo Pareto, an Italian economist, was studying wealth and income distribution in 19th century England. During the course of his studies, he discovered that the majority of land and income was controlled by a minority of the population. In fact, 20% of the population controlled 80% of the wealth and income. On further analysis, mythical lore says that he found that this principle held true not only in different countries and different time periods, but also in contexts such as his garden, where he discovered that 20% of his pea pods yielded 80% of the peas that were harvested. And since our pal Vilfredo identified the trend, many researchers have been busy pointing out some additional modern applications. Check these out. 20% of criminals account for 80% of crime. 20% of motorists account for 80% of accidents. 20% of married individuals account for 80% of divorces. 20% of your carpet probably gets 80% of the wear. 20% of streets account for 80% of the traffic. 20% of product flaws account for 80% of problems. 20% of clients usually account for 80% of profits. I could go on, but I think you get the idea. Oh, why not a few more? How about these? 20% of clothes in your closet are worn 80% of the time. And, perhaps my favorite, 20% of beer drinkers drink 80% of the beer. Are you in that group? (laughs) All right, I'm done for now. Your job, however, has barely begun. Look around you. See where you spend your time. See where you get your results. Is it 50-50 or more like 80-20? All right, let's move into applying the principle. The next logical question is clearly, okay, I get it, but how does this apply to me? As Koch states, quote, 20% of what we do leads to 80% of the results. But 80% of what we do leads to only 20%. We are wasting 80% of our time on low-value outcomes. His advice? Rather than pursuing every available opportunity, Koch suggests we, quote, calm down, work less, and target a limited number of very valuable goals where the 80-20 principle will work for us, end quote. Koch spends half the book on how to apply the 80-20 principle to your business including a chapter on why your strategy is wrong. And he dives into detailed processes to help you figure out what's up with the 80-20s currently hiding in your business. Remember, he's a former very successful consultant, 
so he's extremely good at bringing the principle to life in your business. If you're running a business and have the sense you're not quite focusing on the 20% you should be focusing on, you'll absolutely dig the book just for these chapters. For this note, however, I'm going to only briefly touch on some of the business stuff and then get into the personal applications, the other half of the book, to bring out some of Koch's equally brilliant big ideas for your overall hero's journey. So, let's get to business. Business strategy. Koch says, quote, The 80-20 principle suggests that your strategy is wrong. If you make most of your money out of a small part of your activity, you should turn your company upside down and concentrate your efforts on multiplying this small part, end quote. All right, the very quick look at applying 80-20 to your business starts with this quote. 20% of products usually account for about 80% of dollar sales value. And so do 20% of customers. 20% of products or customers usually also account for about 80% of an organization's profits. End quote. So do you know where your revenue comes from? Find out. Do you know where you spend your time? Find out. Here's what the book suggests. Quote, it is almost certainly true that you make at least 80% of your profits in cash in 20% of your activity and in 20% of your revenues. The trick is to work out which 20%. End quote. I've always been passionate about simplifying my businesses and focusing our team's efforts on the few activities that we believed would yield the greatest results during our startup phases. How about you? Are you wasting time on activities you know aren't yielding the results you want? Well, stop and find the 20% of stuff that's working and do more of it starting now. One more quote. He says, Executives may suspect that some customers and some products are more profitable than others, but when the extent of the difference is proved, they are likely to be surprised and sometimes dumbfounded. All right, now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's take a peek at how we can apply the 80 20 principle to living our hero's journey in the non business context. All right, Koch's incredible passion for creating your ideal life is palpable as you read his words. Truly amazing. And the way he weaves the 80 20 into creating your ideal is genius. So let's start with step number one. Good step number one for any process, really. He says, be unreasonable. Quote, everything you want should be yours. The type of work you want, the relationships you need, the social, mental, and aesthetic stimulation that will make you happy and fulfilled, the money you require for the lifestyle that is appropriate to you and any requirement that you may or may not have for achievement or service to others. If you don't aim for it all, you'll never get it all. To aim for it requires that you know what you want, end quote. That is genius. It comes from chapter 11, which is entitled, You Can Always Get What You Want, which may just win best chapter title ever. <laughs> all right, so rule number one in applying the 80-20 principle to creating your ideal life is simple. We need to know what we want. It also helps to be unreasonable. I've got a George Bernard Shaw over here to the left, which says, the unreasonable man adapts himself to the world. The unreasonable one persists in trying to adapt the world to himself. Therefore, all progress depends on the unreasonable man. Again, that's George Bernard Shaw. So we'll start with a simple question. What's your ideal? What do you absolutely love to do? What comes to you effortlessly? With whom would you love to spend your time? What would you be doing throughout the day? How much money would you make? Where would you live? Would you be able to hike or meditate or sit in your sauna, my personal favorite, whenever you want to? Or would you have a boss telling you what you can do and when you can do it? Good. Let that flow. Grab your journal or sheet of paper and write down what flows through you now. Seriously, we need to quit putting stuff like this off because we rarely get around to it later. So if you can write something down now, write it down. When we have a handle on what we want, we can start to look at whether what we have and what we're doing matches up with these ideals. And of course, then we can do something about it. All right, the next big idea is what's easy. Koch says, it is important to focus on what you find easy. This is where most motivational writers go wrong. 
they assume you should try things that are difficult for you. End quote. I love that. This wisdom is echoed throughout these notes. How about Martin Seligman, who says this in his classic Authentic Happiness? He says, I do not believe that you should devote overly much effort to correcting your weaknesses. Rather, I believe that the highest success in living and the deepest emotional satisfaction comes from building and using your signature strengths. And Leo Buscali in Love says, you are the best you. You will always be the second best anyone else. As Koch advises, we need to, quote, pursue those few things where you are amazingly better than others and that you enjoy the most, end quote. So that begs the question, what are you amazingly better at than others? I have a little thing on the PDF here where I say, I am amazingly better than others at, and I have a few lines where you can write. And then I have, and what I enjoy most doing is, and a few more lines. So if you can't write right now, think about that. All right. Now that we're getting some traction on what you're most passionate about, let's take a quick peek at the people with whom you'll be sharing this joyous life as we move into the next big idea on relationships. Koch says, relationships help us to define who we are and what we can become. Most of us can trace our success to pivotal relationships. All right, here's a news flash. 20% of your friends and loved ones probably account for 80% of your enjoyment and satisfaction. How about you? How's it look for you? It might sound harsh, but why wouldn't you spend a lot more time with the group that gives you so much pleasure and a lot less with the other group? Coke has a brilliant exercise to bring the truth of the 80-20 applied to relationships to your life. Get out your journal or a piece of paper you can immediately burn afterwards, perhaps, and write down the names of your top 20 friends and loved ones, the people with whom you have the most important relationships, ranked from most to least important. All right, you got that? Good. Next step, you have 100 points. Allocate them to the different people according to how much value they give you in your life, relative to one another. As Koch says, you may need more than one pass at the numbers to get them to 100. And what you're likely to find is that around four of the people, which would be 20%, give you 80% of your joy. All right, next step. You have 100 units again. Next to the enjoyment numbers, write down how much time you spend with each person such that the total time comes to 100. You got that? What'd you come up with? Are you spending far less than 80% of your time with the 20% who give you so much joy? As Koch says, the action implications should be plain. Go for quality rather than quantity. Spend your time and emotional energy reinforcing and deepening the relationships that are most important. End quote. Lest you think this is some weird idea from an overly zealous consultant slash author, know that Abraham Maslow, the great psychological researcher who created his hierarchy of needs and coined the phrase self-actualizing, says pretty much the same thing. He says... Self-actualizing people have these especially deep ties with rather few individuals. Their circle of friends is rather small. The ones that they love profoundly are few in number. Partly this is for the reason that being very close to someone in the self-actualizing style seems to require a good deal of time. Devotion is not a matter of the moment. One subject expresses it like this. I haven't got time for many friends. Nobody has, that is, if they are to be real friends. All right, the next big idea is on learning. Koch shares a story of the wisdom of his tutor at Oxford, who told him not to attend lectures because, quote, books can be read faster, but never read a book from cover to cover except for pleasure. When you are working, Find out what the book is saying much faster than you would by reading through. Read the conclusion, then the introduction, then the conclusion again, then dip lightly into any interesting bits. End quote. I love that. As a guy who didn't attend many lectures at UCLA and uh, chose to read the book and the lecture notes, I can relate. Uh, But how do you read a book? Do you go from cover to cover? Why? Unless you're reading it for pleasure, you're wasting a lot of time. 80% of the valuable content can be found in 20% of the book, and according to Koch, absorbed in 20% of the time it takes most people to read the entire book. 
Here's a fundamental application. Several years ago, I taught the 80-20 principle to a friend's 10-year-old daughter who was struggling in school. She learned to read the conclusions, check out the graphs and charts and pictures and leading questions, and then read and mind map the content. Her C's went to A's in about a month and a half. And more importantly, she liked herself and learning a lot more. It's funny, when I visited her school for Special Friends Day, her teacher came up to me and asked me in a whisper, what did you do to her? I told her it was all about the 80-20 principle, of course. So unless you're reading a book for pleasure, read the conclusion, then the intro, check out the graphs and pictures, and then the conclusion again, and maybe some sections a little deeper if you find it particularly interesting. And teach your kids if you have them. It works. All right, how about your diet? My diet? Yes, your diet. If you're like most people, you might get a little confused by all the conflicting information the experts share these days. Why not 80-20 your diet? The reality is that 20% of your healthy eating habits account for 80% of your health gains. So focus on the fundamentals, that 20% that will give you 80% of the gains you're looking for. What are the fundamentals? The obvious stuff that we all know we should be doing, but few of us actually do. Are you drinking enough water? To get to that amount, take your body weight, divide it in half, and drink that many ounces. Are you eating breakfast, eating a lot of fresh organic fruits and vegetables? Are you avoiding refined foods and refined sugar and avoiding saturated fat? You do these things and you're 80% there. And I think you'll be surprised by how quickly your energy will increase. Not to mention how quickly the number of compliments from your spouse or significant other will increase as well, which is always a good thing. And finally, the last big idea from this great book is focus. Quote, whenever you spot a 20% activity, run to it, surround yourself with it, immerse yourself in it, patent it, make yourself its expert, worshiper, high priest, partner, creator, propagandist, an indispensable ally. Make the most of it. If the most appears to be more than you can imagine, multiply your imagination. End quote. How great is that? 80-20 is all about focusing your energy. As Koch says, Conventional wisdom is not to put all your eggs in one basket. 80-20 wisdom is to choose a basket carefully, load all your eggs into it, and then watch it like a hawk. It's amazing how many people hedge their bets. What about you? Are you holding back from pursuing your dreams, hedging a bit, and waiting until just the right time? That will probably never come, by the way. Discover what you're most enthusiastic about and focus your energy on how you can serve the world by sharing your gifts with that enthusiasm. Pretty please. Well, what are you waiting for? Choose your basket carefully, load all your eggs into it, and create your ideal life. All right, that wraps up this note on the 80-20 principle. Let's take a quick look at the author, some other recommended notes, and the quotes from the sidebar of the PDF. Richard Koch, our friendly author, is a consultant, businessman, and author of the international bestsellers The 80-20 Principle, The Secret of Achieving More with Less, and The 80-20 Individual, The Nine Essentials of 80-20 Success at Work. Richard has also released Living the 80-20 Way, Work Less, Worry Less, Succeed More, Enjoy More. Sounds like a good combination. Learn more about his books, seminars, and all things 80-20 at his website, The 80-20 Principle. That's the8020principle.com. Some other notes I think you'll enjoy. The Philosopher's Notes on Authentic Happiness, on Love, on the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, and on the Path of Least Resistance. All right, how about some of the quotes from the sidebar? We'll start with... Von Goethe's quote, things which matter most must never be at the mercy of things that matter least. And Richard Koch says, the few things that work fantastically well should be identified, cultivated, nurtured, and multiplied. Vin Manaktala says, those who analyze the reasons for their success know that the 80-20 rule applies. 80% of their growth, profitability, and satisfaction comes from 20% of the clients. At a minimum, firms should identify the top 20% to get a clear picture of desirable prospects for future growth. And Richard Koch says, a simple business is always better than a complex business. 
And for the individual too, it is better to know a few things well, or preferably one thing exceptionally well, than it is to know many things superficially. And he says, a surprising number of people spend a lot of time with people they don't like. This is a complete and utter waste of time. It is not enjoyable. It's tiring. Jim Ron says, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And back to Richard Koch for the final three quotes. He says, for both personal and professional relationships, fewer and deeper is better than more and less deep. And what is the 20% of your time when you achieve 80% of your results? Do more of it. What is the 80% of your time when you achieve little? Do less of it. And finally, so there you have it. Think 80-20 and act 80-20. Those who ignore the 80-20 principle are doomed to average returns. Those who use it must bear the burden of exceptional achievement. That is a burden I'm willing to bear, and I trust that you are as well. So I will end this note and let you get to work on that. Have a great day and look forward to catching you on another Philosopher's Notes.